Hello everybody and welcome once again to Surviving with Blood Magic. This episode we are going to do revisit the um, wither again I think. But this time we're not going to use the sort of cheaty bedrock technique where you put him in a 3x3 um, bedrock and he can't do any harm. We're going to actually try and fight him in a sort of mm, a, maybe a 1.13 type way when you've got this, this bedrock thing doesn't exist anymore. So let's get started. So what we ha I had to do is basically I had to make a lot of iron. I wanted to build um, a beacon, oh, a set of beacons, and I needed about three stacks and 52 blocks of iron. And what I was trying to do was automate the process of building, uh, of doubling ore. So what I was doing was this. I was basically setting up tables like this to get some coal sand. But basically, cut, let's start from the beginning, shall we? If we look at cutting fluid here, spell it right of course <laughs> basic cutting fluid is this one here and this requires coal sand you just see me show coal sand gunpowder redstone water bottles plant oil plant oil we can make with two potatoes and a bone meal it's not a big deal in fact any of the vegetables or from minecraft are, are usable for this and this is actually quite good because we've got lots of potatoes um sugar is easy enough we just get that from there so what we need to do is to make first of all i need to make this actually, i actually need to make this and this you see me doing this but there is a there is a sort of slight trick to this for example here this table i've set up so it will fill it in like this with one potato in here amount one and in here it says one uh, bone meal so I thought what we need is two potatoes. So let's just do this. I want to put another filter in here. In fact, I need to make two filters. So let's do those first of all. You'll see why in a second. I need some colored dye. I need some sticks. I need these frame parts. And I need some glass. So if we click on this and say the uses of this here. The one I want is on the second page. So I want an MBT filter. So I'll make one of those. And I also want to have a look at the use of this in another precise item filter. Like this. I also need the tinkering or the routing tool, which is the routing node router here. And because I haven't set this one up yet. Uh, in fact, it's actually quite a difficult to set up. What I want to do is I want to put into this precise item filter. Let's put this precise item filter into here first of all. And it needs to be in the right direction. So let's have a look. The direction at the moment is north. So we put it in the north direction. Like that. And then we want one potato. I've got some potatoes in here. Let's take out a potato and say... Oops, try again. Put that into here. It's a shadow. We want one potato coming in like that. And we'll put the potato back in here. We don't need that anymore. And then we need to root this node. Now, node routing is actually fairly straightforward. There's two techniques. The first technique is you can just sort of link it directly between, as you can see, directly to the master routing node here. Or another way to do it is you can actually um, link the two together, like I have done around here. You see this table here, I've got two nodes in it. And this table, I've actually got six nodes routing around here like that. And there's one underground. Now, these are in, these are output nodes, which basically put stuff into the table. And underneath this, we'll have a look at this one here, for instance. I've got an, uh, an input routing node, which takes the stuff out of the table. Now, you can put the orb. You've also got orbs. They all need orbs. Um, you can put those in from the top if you need to. Well, obviously, generally speaking, you don't care about that. You'll have set up your table, I guess. So we just need to link this one in here. So I'm going to link this. No, I don't care from. So I'm going to link this one because I haven't linked this in yet. So this routing node here. That's routing node. So they're all linked together now. Now this should have one more potato in it. Um, north potatoes one. Ah, yes, that's right. This has also got one potato. So it's seeing one potato in here. If I take this potato out. It should, you see it puts in two, because at the time each of these nodes saw a different. Now unfortunately this doesn't work, because the recipe is correct. Let's take out the plant oil from there, first of all. Put the plant oil in here, like that. So, 
I was going, this is actually a bit of a nuisance. How do you get it to work? So the way I did it was like this. On this table here, I bet you have to set up one stack of each items here. Um, and link that in. So I don't need this node in that case. So I'll remove this node and we'll save it. Because it's probably better to have it uh, out of it. Not to use it like that. And put into this one 128 potatoes. So select 128. Like that. And then it'll put 64 in here, 64 in there, and it'll start to work again. It'll now start to make um, plant oil. And that plant oil will stay there until it's actually needed. In fact, it'll fill up a stack of plant oil. Because I think in here, no, it won't. It'll do as many as we've got in here, bone meal. So that's the plant oil, and that's then taken out. In fact, it doesn't get taken out and put into here normally, because I've already got footage of plant oil on here. It gets put in directly into the next one of these, which is the... Um, want to make the basic cutting fluid uh, and this is why I need the other filter here because I set this one up and I wasn't getting any basic cutting fluid into here and I, was, I didn't really understand why I'm not getting any basic cutting fluid in here because I've got this basic cutting fluid set up in here and it's set to north and the number of these is set to um, try again it should be set to one actually I've got set up to zero so what we're going to do is we're going to just uh, remove this one we need some basic cutting fluid obviously in order to put it into the filter so we've got one of those um, in fact I think this output routing node because there's an input routing node at the top doesn't have any filters and so it'll take anything it needs out of here this output routing node should put in basic cutting fluid and iron sand into this chest now uh, this should be linked up it's hard to see because i put these two together like that um it probably would have been more sensible to route these two across like that but anyway for now we're going to leave it so i wasn't getting any any out any into here <laughs> and this is one of its little funny funny quirks you've got in here it does take your arm out so that's put it in slots this slot has no use it doesn't do anything. What I need to do now is to get this into here. So let's take this out of here. Uh, let's remove this filter out of here. What happened there? Right, I've got the filter is here. Precise item filter. And I don't think this one actually exists. Huh. So we'll take the one that is ignoring and... Oh, I don't know what's going on here. Try again. See, can I remove this? Yes, I can. This time... But it's put it back in again. Don't ask me what it's doing or where it's even getting that one from. Now you'll see I'm moving slowly because I've lost my armour. So this bit of automation is a bit strange sometimes. Um, I'll tell you what, let's break it. It's probably the easiest way. If, you, if something's not working properly, just break it and you can put it back down again. So we should have the output routing node here like this. And it's not going to be linked in, which is actually also something that's good. We don't want it to be linked up at the moment. We want to set up the filter. We want to do that first. So we've got the NBT filter in here. So I want to ignore the NBT data of this basic cutting fluid here. And I want to set it to just one. Like that. So I should have only have one cutting fluid in this table. So the only thing we have to do now is to li then link it up. So we link it up. So you see this, this one was going around the table here. So we'll just shift. Oh, let's turn it again. Look at that. Actually, that doesn't exist. It's just a phantom one. Just right click that there and then bring that straight to the master node. I could even take it to this node, of course, but we'll put it to the master node. So now it's linked into that and it should have in here. I'm hoping it's behaving strangely. Why is it behaving strangely? I've got a filter in NBT data here and that should be set to one. And here I have got one iron ore was set to 16 because one of these will do 16 items. So, I don't know where the other bits have come from, <laughs> I have to be honest with you. It's obviously taking everything out of the chest. Um, oh yes, of course, because I've done this wrong. That's the reason why. I set it up to down, didn't I? Let's take that out of there. Remove that. So the one we want, of course, was north. Should have done that first of all, shouldn't I? Let's put that in there. That should have actually remembered this. It hasn't done. Basic cutting fluid one. Okay, good. So now we can remove these items out of here and see what it does instead. I don't want the coal in there either. And I don't want the iron ore in there because it's all 58 in there. Let's put this stuff back and down. I've lost my 
armor chest plate again. So we need um, iron sand, basic cutting fluid, lots of plant oil, this coal and potato we also want to do in here, I think. What else is it taken out of me? If you get it wrong, as you can see, it's, um, it's a bit of a nuisance. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. And those two will stack. So now let's have a look. Basic flooding fluid north. So it's now got a basic cutting fluid in here and it's starting to process it iron ore. And it's just going to keep one in, as you can see. And as soon as that gets down to zero, it then will disappear and it will be replaced with another one. So that's working just fine. So, in fact, everything's working just fine. I just haven't put this one into here to make the next basic cutting fluid. But that shouldn't go out of here because I think this filter here, so we'll just check it, is set to one. So this chest should only have one basic cutting fluid in it at any time like that, as it's got correctly set up. So let's have a look, check on here. So this one's actually sitting in here. It's not doing anything. That's working just fine. And this one's actually working nicely. So of course then the iron ore is coming back into here. And you can do anything you want with it now. You'll see it's got 12 in it. Now. Let's just sort it. 14. Oh, that's a bit strange. Didn't, how's it working? It seems to be doing strange things here. <laughs> but anyway. So we've got 32 in here now. And in a few seconds. 32 and 16. 48. We should get some more. There we've got 18 in here. Let's put the chest plate back on again. So that actually does work. And then this one here, I was just using as a, uh, a manual crafting one. I needed some, we need actually some quite a lot of flint. And the way to get flint, the recipe for flint is on the alchemy table. I could have changed it with, trade it with a Fletcher, some gravel and emeralds. But you can also just use um, some gravel here will give you two. And a flint will give you two flints. So basically you're just converting that gravel into flint at the price of some LP. So that's this part of the done. Next bit, I'm going to trundle over in here and show you a build. Um, this build is not my build. It's a build from uh, Tango Tech. And it's basically, I need a lot of wither skulls and skulls because we're going to do this. Get out of the way, thank you. And here I've got a teleposer. Now this teleposer doesn't work all the time. In fact, the reason it doesn't work, as I've discovered, is I need, and I haven't brought it with me, Oh dear, I need to put a spot loader in here to, to load this chunk. This chunk's not loaded, the teleposer won't work. So I can, I can go back because the, to the base, but I can't come from the base to here using that. Anyway, that aside. So what we have, have up here is a... So I've used flower pots instead of using um, daylight sensors. And what I'm hoping for is you'll see here there are mobs. And there's quite a lot of moves. They can't see me. Well, they can see me down there when I'm below ground. But they, normally they can't see me. I want to take these with me. I haven't got with me um, one of my... I should have brought it with me, I suppose, thinking about it. I'm just waiting here a few seconds to, for the uh, wither skeletons to spawn. There's one spawned over here, like that. And when he sees me, he will chase after me. And what he's supposed to do is he's supposed to come up to the top here like this. Oh. I see where he came from. I'm not sure why this guy's up here. Shouldn't be up here really. Let's just deal with him. Can I deal with him? Yeah. So the wizard skeleton, where's he gone to? Oh, he didn't come with me all the way. Because I'm travelling too fast for him. Come on. And it's supposed to follow me up here. So if I go slowly, like this, it'll follow me. And the idea is... Oh, I see the pushing the zombie pigmen. <laughs> is he comes up here, all the way to the top here. And then he gets up here, and then he... He's supposed to then come onto this top bit here. But he never does. So I have to kill him from here. And hopefully, if with a bit of luck, I'll pick up... Um, and a head. Now, when you kill a zombie pigmen like that in one shot, they don't get aggravated on you. We'll see that in a few seconds. 
So what I've been doing, when I built this, I actually picked up around about a stack of, of um, heads. So I don't need any more heads, so I'm not going to come along here. And basically, you just, the idea is they're supposed to, you can run up and down here. They can't, they can't see you. Um, the blazers can't see you. I think there's an aggravated pigment there, actually. Oh, yeah, that's one. Baby one. And they're supposed to get the items are going to get picked up and put into here, as you can see. The blaze rod did. Um, I don't need these guys. They can stay with that. I haven't got any... Um, this has actually got enough damage to kill them in one, because it's got smite four on it. Undead to get killed in one. I've picked up something else there. What I meant to bring with me was a spot loader for this. Oh, there's a ghast over there. I could go and get my ghast, but I'm not going to bother. In fact, I've got I've got spot loaders in here. And yeah, to be honest with you, I thought I had a thing in there as well. Let's just put this into here. I don't need this into here, and I don't need the demon demon will in here either. So we'll put the demon will into that like that. I can go back and I'll go back and put the spot loader in there. So if I come back here now is where I started from. This is another fortress too. I did find a second fortress. I don't think I told you about it. You see it doesn't work. And it's not working because of that. It's strange because the other ones which are also not loaded in the overworld, here for instance, if we go to the flower garden, it's night time, I won't do it now, I'll just have a quick sleep. And then we'll go trundle off there very quickly. It works. All the time so i think it's because it's different dimension there's witches as well i found a witch hut you see no problem whatsoever get here no problem and we can get back also no problem like that so now it's time to go to the nether before i go to the nether let's have a look there are a few more sigils we haven't made in blood magic not very many we've done a lot of these i haven't bothered with this one this basically freezes stuff winter's breath Elasticity gives you bounce. I haven't done that one either. I'm not sure that it's not necessary. And maybe it's just a what, reinforced slate. So maybe that's an early an early form of um, bouncing will then give you protection against full damage, I guess. Signal of the Claw, we've dealt with that one. Transposition signal, we've done that. We've got one of those. Um, this one basically allows you to move items. Uh, Teleposer teleposition that allows you to teleport back to a base holding we've done that one and this one we've done this one signal of compression is basically it compresses items as you mine so for example if you're doing redstone you get blocks of redstone whirlwind is supposed to protect you from um arrows but there's no recipe for it, it doesn't i think this one doesn't never worked anyway from what i could see and the phantom bridge this one i have built let's get that out of this chest here like this Phantom Bridge does have some uses. It's not desperately useful, but it does have some uses. For example, here, if I activate it now and I walk along here, I'm actually sinking, so it's not good. It should be working. But what you have to do is you'll be at one height, block high, then you can walk like that. And it will build a bridge to where you want. Of course, the disadvantage of this is if you're very high up, when you deactivate it, and you haven't got full damage protection, let's just to deactivate it the bridge will disappear and you'll fall down and hurt yourself <laughs> anyway that aside let's go up and grind a few nethers uh, with us one of the reasons i want to do this is so you can see um you'll also notice my health is down a bit at the moment and also my food bars down and as we as we trundle along, we'll you'll find out what one thing I've been doing. The other thing I've been doing is I've been setting up the um, ritual of grounding. Now, ritual of grounding I haven't used before, like this. And I think I actually did intend to bring another signal with me. You see now, you see I've got all of these effects, and that's because I built one of these six by six. Um, beacons and program each one of those to being something specific and over here i've got the ritual of grounding so with the ritual of grounding it doesn't tell you too much about it um when you've got your let me get the t tinker out i've got the tinker out with me i'm hearing some 
strange noises. I've got some potions in there, but because I built the um, the beacons, I don't really need these potions. I've also got a wither skeleton here, skull in here, and another sixty in here like this. So we'll need those. We won't need the phantom bridge. We'll need some soul sand. We're going to need this, and we're going to need one of these. I'm going to use the destructive will because that's basically the one that amplifies the damage of this. I've also brought stuff with me that I don't want. So let's get rid of it. I wanted the tinkerer here, didn't I? This has actually got the looting one in it. Is that the looting one? Yes, that's okay. And I'll move one of the sigils out of the way. And one of the one of these is strength too. So if you have a look at this here, you'll see I've got strength two, and that stays on basically. Strength two gives you an extra six attack damage. So basically, instant death for most mobs. It doesn't really reflect in here very well, but this does show you that once in a while we'll get a very high, like that, seventy um, damage. And that 70 damage, uh, and if you want to remove these, by the way, if you, these test dummies, you shift, you simply shift left click it with a, a hand and you can pick it up again. So I'll put it in there. Oh, out of the way, don't need him anymore. So yeah, so I was going to show you this. If I shift, get to the right mode here, define the area. Um, don't want to define area, I want information like this. You right click it, it says forces entity on the ground and prevents jumping. It's not true. <laughs> well, not completely true, shall we say. So let's have a look in the book here. So the ritual of grounding is on the page for the rituals. And it says the ritual of grounding manipulates gravity in its area. By default, it drags mobs to the ground and prevents jumping. Supplying the ritual with raw will makes it affect players as well, in addition to mobs. Corrosive will disables gravity altogether. In other words, they don't. You don't fall or sink. Destructive will vastly increases fall damage of affected entities, and will allow the ritual to affect bosses. So, destructive will something we want in here. So, let, we need different types of will. So, in here, I've got um, another demon crucible. I'm going to put another demon crucible down here like this. Because we want it in this chunk and this chunk is in this chunk here so we need destructive let's go back to the book here so vengeful will amplifies the grounding effect in combination with corrosive will, will basically lead to levitation instead vengeful will um destructive will are the effects of the heavy heart and it gives more fall damage now we're not really concerned about that but we do we'll put vengeful will We'll put destructive will and we'll put um, steadfast, the steadfast and our ritual effect bosses into these three things. So let's go and get those out of here. I, I'm a bit confused, I will be honest, because it's a bit contradictory about what it says in here. Um, I'll read, we'll have a look at this in a second. So we wanted some, oh, don't go, I need this. Wrong chest. Obviously, this the idea of this one here was these potions were basically regeneration two, uh, strength two, and invisibility two. It should help when you're fighting the wither anyway. So I'm not doing that. So we've got vengeful will, so put, we need say four of those. Steadfast will, we'll need four of those. And destructive will, we'll need four of these as well. We've got a head, don't need the head. We'll put those, so these need to be in my hot bar. Um, and when we change the will of the, try again. <laughs> and I'm not sure how this, I'm never tired to see that. Well, there's not another few zombie pigmen to me. Actually, they're quite useful doing this because not only does it, as you can see, they don't get aggroed on you. There's another one over here. It'll increase the will in, in my, um, Tartaric gem, so that's why I'm doing that. So now, if we go here and we set, we'll set will consumed. Okay, so now we stand in the middle of this and we should right click. Uh, is it shift right click? 
it doesn't say anything. Not what it says. Do I shift right click on this? Yes, okay. So it's now the it will affect vengeful, destructive, and steadfast will. Great. So we can put these three into here. It'll take at least two of those. Two of those, and it should take some of those. So we've basically now got, as you can see on the bar here, a full set of wills. Now I'm not sure how if this is going to affect bosses or not. Let's get rid of this. Don't want that one. I'll put these back in here. Don't need those with me for the time being. Um, I don't need the ritual diviner and the ritual tinkerer anymore. Um, I probably don't need this either. These nodes, rooting nodes. I'll put everything. Oh, I want that one of those, don't I? Because I want to go back and do the arm. Let's go and pick up the bits from the, the zombie pigmen. So obviously, there must be another level of this, as you can see. <laughs> Picking up quite a few bits and pieces from those guys, don't I? Let's go over here. There was another one just down here. A little bit of extra gold, no big deal. A bit of rotting flesh, actually quite useful. So let's go and start to do this. So I need this, this, and this. We need our gem. And basically, that's it. Uh, more, more people to grind. Huh? So what we do, we come in here. Actually, we've already set it up. I'm ready to put the last of the heads into here, into place. So I'll put the head into place. We'll get out of the way. Get the get the um, axe ready and wait. Now this built construction here is basically three levels of. I'll wait for it a second. There we go. One hit. Um, that's actually lucky. It doesn't always work that way. I will be honest with you. So what I'm going to do first of all is I've got my signal yes up here. Put up some light. You can see better down here what's actually going on. So <laughs> the one hit with her. There we go. How about that? And then I could do that again, and I will actually do it again. But for the time being, I'm going to grind a few more zombie pigmen. <laughs> Get the wheel up. Maybe it's half dead, that's interesting. What I also did in here is to put into this, as you said, another ritual, and you've seen this one already, the satiated stomach, that's why I cooked some more fish up. And this one um, basically fills your health bar up, as you can see. And what also happens down in this little space is occasionally there will be a um, gas spawning. Right, um, well, basically, that's it for this episode. Normally, the series it's actually the end of the series of Blood Magic. I will do another episode about Blood Arsenal, which is an add on to Blood Magic, and that'll be the last of the series. So, anyway, until next time, I wish you all the best. Bye for now. <laughs>